The offseason's come to an end, which means it's time for another season of Falcons franchise. Entering year four now, we had a very decent offseason, I would say. Nothing absolutely spectacular, but we were already coming off of a pretty good season. The offense really didn't get a whole lot better. However, we did get another name into the receiver room, and that is the six foot five, 216 pound Jaleel Freeman from Clemson. He got very good speed, great jump ball ability, not an amazing route runner, but what separates him, first of all, he's got great traits. Run after catch, aggressive trait, or aggressive catch trait, fight for yards. He's got 88 change of direction, 84 juke, 81 spin, 92 agility. He could be a very interesting player to develop. He might even be wide receiver of two or three in some packages this season. Chichahid's more of like that wide receiver work type player for me. Also, I'm going to be live tonight on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bengal, midnight Eastern, 11 Central, probably playing a little bit of MLB The Show franchise, but I typically stay mostly online. You guys can see me actually try to be good at a game. So that link down below, twitch.tv slash Bengal for the live stream tonight. I usually stream pretty regularly and second channel Bengal plays in the description I upload fairly regularly during MLB the show season so check it out link down below hope to see you tonight deep threat catches screens on occasion you have skill points for a lot of these players as well and then defensively our first pick was Ezekiel Pleasant now I got a comment I think saying it's actually a Pleasant he's a Frenchman uh no he's not he's in my franchise and I actually I got on the phone with Ezekiel and I said Hey, is this Ezekiel Plaisant? Ple Plaisant? And he said, no, I'm not some French. Well, okay, I'm not I'm not French is what he said. And uh, yeah, it's Pleasant. So 6'4", 296. Took him in the top 10. Traded up to number 9 to get him. And he's very good already. I really wanted to prioritize defensive line help. I was looking on the edge. We couldn't get in position for any of the top tier edge rushers. But we did get one of the top 5 talents in the entire draft in Ezekiel Pleasant. 84 power moves. 77 speed, 77 finesse moves. Block shedding's not terrible. Strength, speed, everything's pretty good. Only the bull rush trait, but he's a leader, and I like his potential. He's going to be a rush D tackle right away. Johnny Hamilton's great, but he just doesn't have the speed to really get after the QB. He does have high power moves, but the speed is a pretty big issue at 59. So he's still going to be a big run stuffing defensive tackle for us that can provide pass rush upside but in terms of clear and obvious passing situations coming out there and let's say a nickel package it's not going to be Johnny Hamilton at 382 pounds on the field we're going to get more of a defensive tackle rotation this year we also drafted a safety with star or better development out of Iowa good speed good zone good hit power nothing crazy but imagine he'll make some type of an impact on special teams Probably will end up changing that number 19 number. And we also brought in Damian Harris. Brought in... I think that was pretty much it. Josh Oliver. Not like a game-breaking addition, though. Find Leo Chanel for linebacker depth. We're able to bring back Troy Anderson. And then didn't do too much else. But I like where the team is. Of course, we're coming off of a Super Bowl win. Let's continue to keep that momentum rolling. And let's hop into training camp here and try to get some upgrades. Of course, target passing is going to be Trey Lance. Trey Lance, I've been begging for him to get star dev at some point. He's just the best option we have. I know the people, some of you, like Jake Meeks quite a lot. The slow delivery hurts him a lot for me. And Trey Lance is not old. He's still young. He's got a quick release. He's got good throw power. He's got good mobility. The Trey Lance haters are out of control he's been good he really has been and i'm not really itching to make a move now he's been injured Ready? having a good backup quarterback is important now which it it really should have been for a while but Madden had it so starting quarterbacks couldn't get injured which was brain dead and i think that's been corrected in madden 2024 20, yeah madden 24 is the game that i'm playing sometimes they run together you know you can get but um it is important to have the depth there. Here we go. And Trey here Lance go. here, hopefully getting gold. We actually might cut this slightly close. I don't know who we're going to get it here in this first try. I get 5,000 points on one throw. Wait, these targets are set up, probably. It'd be a nightmare to try to get this. Not happening. 
Sometimes they just don't put the targets in, I would say, advantageous positions for it. Sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to get those big double scores. But that's all right. I really, I hate checking down in this. I never check down. But based on where these targets are in the routes, they're almost forcing me to check down. I hate. Want more throws like that. This is just kind of a weird formation for me. Be able to line this up, though. Be very close to 20k if we don't hit it already. And we are well over. It's not about completing the passes in this drill. Long way. It's all about just hitting the targets. And bullseye, of course. You want to aim for it. A massive difference between hitting the inner circle, the red, and the bullseye. It is such a huge differential. Show me star dev for Trey Lance, please! Not gonna happen. It never happens. But, alright, we'll jump in with Jake Meeks. He does have star dev, which is an argument for playing him. The thing is, we're trying to win. If, if we weren't trying to win, you're trying to develop the team and build for the future, maybe Jake Meeks would get the advantage. But I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to put the best player out there, and that just happens to be Trey Lance right now. It just is what it is. And I'm not mad about it. Trey Lance haters, get a job. This is another one of those drills where the routes really are super important for success. If you get a bad you know, uh, combo of routes on the field, it becomes like essentially impossible to actually move the football. And it's not about completing deep passes early. That really doesn't matter a whole ton. As we get two great routes for especially that last one. It's about completing passes early and getting the multiplier high. So I want drags, just quick routes in general. But yeah, drags and shallow crossers are definitely the best. And especially if we can throw out linebackers. But oftentimes, the receivers turn these into option routes and they just stop running. It's like, hey, you're going to get open. And they're just like, nah, I don't feel like it. Or they'll get slightly rerouted by a linebacker or something. And then they will not run the route that it says they're going to run, which screws everything up. And if you throw one incompletion, as we're about to, it resets your entire progress after it already took forever to build up the multiplier. And then it becomes very difficult to get gold. It's still doable here, I think, but it's not easy, as that was a mistake. You need to throw that ball earlier. 14 seconds to save the world. I mean, nothing's open here. Drummond maybe should have got open at some point, but again, kind of got rerouted and didn't kind of do the right thing. Didn't get the separation that I kind of expected him to. Yeah, we're not going to get gold time around. That's what I'm saying. It's just one mistake or one get unlucky, and your chances are completely dead in the water. Sometimes there really just is nowhere to go with the football, which you could say, oh, fine, that's, you know, realistic. Sometimes in the NFL, there's nowhere to go with Ball. But you can't scramble. You can't do anything. You have to throw the ball. So it complicates things. A lot. I hate this drill a ton. It seems so luck-based sometimes. I'm not saying I've never missed a window. Like I should have all way earlier. But sometimes there just is legitimately nobody open. And that makes me really annoyed. Like I guess I have to pass that and lob that. Ugh there all right there might be enough time to make something happen five seconds figure it out don't really feel like anyone got open there okay now with 20 seconds i get 11k it's just if you have the correct routes on the field it makes things incredibly easy compared to seemingly impossible for me skill issue i'm sure been doing this drill for four hours feels like it what do we do for rushing attack Bijan's a 99 Keontae Talley it is I mean this doesn't matter I swear if Keontae Talley gets up to superstar dev that would be extremely interesting doesn't happen and I think for red zone attack Neil Madsen did get up to star dev super productive I think we're gonna use Quentin Drummond and then for the red zone attack, we're Leo Freeman. So receiver battle, Drummond. 
Superstar dev is fine. I'm not trying to get a dev trade upgrade. I just want the skill point. I want to continue to develop him. He is our best overall deep threat. Can't really outrun AJ Terrell, apparently. Out of reach. I've never seen that before, ever. This drill. Okay, well, inauspicious start. We'll figure it out. See what Jaleel Freeman can do. This is not actually a great test for it because much a guaranteed touchdown about every time if you take the correct angle and Trey Lance can actually deliver the ball. But I'll tell you, the the burst from Jaleel Freeman is pretty impressive at that size. 6'5", 220. I mean, that's a, that's a big dude. I don't know what that was, but uh, yeah, he, he could be a really interesting option for us. I'm excited about his potential. See what this rookie year looks like. But getting a six foot five receiver in the offense when we already have Madsen and Pitts, I was out of out. I'm actually not going to get 10,000 here. Unreal. I will say though, the problem with being six foot five with this game's engine, like the movement of all the players, is nothing is particularly fluid. Everything is just so janky, and none of the and then you know what? To be fair, it's tough for a six foot five guy to break down, but. The long strides just carry these guys out of the end zone on way too many balls. And then trench battle, the long haul, as if it was ever in doubt, it's going to be Ezekiel Pleasant. Is it his finesse moves that gr that's great? I want to say finesse moves, but he does have the bull rush trait, doesn't he? Let's see how he does here. All right, against Braxton Jones, I guess. Not really getting the explosiveness off the rip here. I keep trying to do like a swim move or whatever, but he just goes to a club. The only thing that's consistently working kind of seems to be that bull rush. Ooh, that. But I guess he does have a bull rush trait. I kind of thought he was a finesse rusher. Maybe it was power moves that was higher. I don't know. It, it seems like it hit. I know he was really great in you know, every pass rushing you know, ability, but I guess maybe he's primary uh power rush guy i don't know i mean gold was pretty easy i'm hoping he ends up being an x-factor player that's the dream do i have the staff points to actually reveal that here in preseason i might getting dylan stanley star development would be a very nice upgrade he's my mike linebacker he built to do it super fast not a great start though but i just the lack of star dev is you know Hurting him a little bit. Show me star dev for Dylan Stanley. Please give me a dev trade upgrade. Please. Please. Nope. Jason Carrington just one incompletion away. And of course we get bumped and we can't get gold. It's still possible if I force three incompletions in a row with Jason Carrington. We can still do it. So I need him to lock in. But I'm also controlling. That's, that's an important distinction. Covered sack works to get the multiplier up. We need a deflection or an interception here. Not going to happen because of the weird route. I'm having a rough time today. All right, gold for Jason Carrington. I'd love for him to get a dev trade upgrade. That would actually be sweet. Then he would have superstar brother or superstar development just like his brother, Jose Carrington, the linebacker. Plays on our team. Didn't happen this time around. Obviously, never does in training camp, really. We have some upgrades. Interesting that this bronze free safety has free skill points. Probably not going to make the team. We did just get an ability slot, though, for Chris Lindstrom because now 95. All. I'll give him secure protector. Seems good to me. I'm not sure best thing would be, but that seems pretty good. Kyle Pitt should also get another ability slot as well. Now that he'll be a 95 overall vertical threat. Still probably going to play him in the slot a lot. I love the mismatch. And a lot of blocking gets better for him there. I don't really care about pass blocking very much. Getting that 95 overall vertical threat is... Automatic. He plays in the slot. That's going to be a cheat code. That is going to be so good. Plus three power moves for Kyrie Yankee. Up to 85 now. That could be a real... Real difference maker. And this slot upgrade for Jason Carrington is going to be awesome. Should give him a really nice boost. Plus two or three to man coverage, tackling, like that. Only plus one to man coverage. Get press and awareness, tackle, and 
agility go up by one. Makes him better. I thought we'd get a little bit more of a boost. Not too far away from his next skill point, though. Really not too bad. I haven't shown you guys every upgrade just because a lot of these just don't particularly matter a ton. They're marginal boosts, but if anything big happens, and for big players like starting quarterback Trey Lance, for example, and Quentin Drummond, you guys will see. Quentin Drummond, medium route running, catching, release. I think deep threat makes the most overall sense. We'll upgrade him to an 80 overall. Got ability slot, plus two to deep route running and catching. Didn't get any to medium, but 85 deep route running is really nice. Catching upgrade, I also like. I'm going to take return man off of him, I think, unless it just ends up being the best thing we can have right now, which it actually might be. Most of these don't really fit just yet. Bray Lance. Deep accuracy improving would be nice. His awareness is still not very good, but the accuracy, the throw power, the speed, everything there is like pretty good. It's just the deep throw accuracy better. And it's just throw under pressure. 82, throw on the run, 88. I think I'm going to do strong arm as opposed to improviser. His overall remains unchanged, but hopefully he does actually get significantly better, and he doesn't. Plus one to throw accuracy. It's cool, I guess. Awareness, whatever. But didn't really get what I was aiming for. Dylan Stanley actually gets a plus two to an 81. And he's looking like he's going to get another skill point. Over the 10,659 skill point or XP threshold. A lot of things change there. Never seen this black screen. What about Ezekiel Pleasant here? Yeah, it does have 84 power moves. But finesse moves is good too. So we could really go any number of directions here. I think I'm going to do Run Stopper. Purely... So he's a more well-rounded player. He's already a very good pass rusher. The plus three to block sheds. Great. So still a 70. Or actually, he did go up. 79 overall. Very close to an 80. Might even become an 80 before the end of preseason. And then we will know what his dev trade is. Don't really even have to waste reveal on that if we want. Could go a different direction. Sure. Who should our new focus players be? Well... This is maybe the most interesting player on the team, Marco Harris. We drafted him. He's a mountain of a man. And I'm going to make an adjustment. He's 6'7", 368. He's a little bit too big to be a meatball, as I mentioned. And he's an offensive lineman that we moved to tight end. He's going to be a really fun sub-package player. I'd like to get him in there at fullback, maybe even a little bit. Why I've made him a tight end. But Marco Harris, again, too small to be a meatball. He is Meatloaf. Meatloaf Harris. <laughs> Welcome to the team. We're going to get him some carries at some point, hopefully. That'd be super fun. He's going to be blocking. He's not the fastest guy. 57 speed. Does have 74 acceleration. 95 strength. Does he have trucking? Break tackles 34. Trucking's 39 but his impact block is 94. Maybe we can't give him the football, but he can lead block for us, that's for sure. I don't think he's worth his spot here as a focus player. We can't make him good enough to ever fall his role. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but we can change it. Bray Lance is still going to be in here. Gotta continue to develop him. George Holloman doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Johnny Hamilton at this point doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Dylan Stanley... Who is the last one going to be? Quentin Drummond, probably. That'll be our group. Get these mini games done. Probably will not show you guys these. You know, unless there's some type of uh, development that you need to see, like a dev trade upgrade, but honest, probably not going to happen. For preseason, you guys may remember I play the moments, just highlight some of the younger players when we can, some of the players that are a little bit more buried on depth chart, but you guys know the team is pretty much in place. It's cool to be coming off of a full win. Love that. Built the team to a good spot. We also lost some talent. No more Tyler Algier. Damian Harris is going to be our starting running back in this one. And we're going to see if we can catch the football out of the backfield. Not going to be his primary role. But he may have to do it from time to time. Tyler Algier had to do it from time to time. I expect no less Damian Harris. Let's see. Second and three. 
like the idea of Quentin Drummond here. The timing wasn't perfect, but we're able to complete that pass. I do want to see Jaleel Freeman, but of course, Kyle Pitts is essentially our starting slot receiver. To roll out with Lance, trying to throw a bullet and find Madsen for the score. Neil Madsen, touchdown. He said that a lot last year. But we know what he can do. Let me see the rookies on the field. Let me see the younger players. Let me see the guys looking to work for a roster spot. Caden Ellis in at defensive end. That's a mistake. Leo Chanel in there. It is going to be a run. And kind of all over it, but it doesn't matter. Trainer still gets three. Pleasant in there. Defensive tackle. Would love to see him make a big time play. Somehow that pass is caught. Hollister in at quarterback for the Dolphins. Elijah Higgins on the catch. Get some pressure. Number 98. I want to see you in the backfield. Gonna be a pitch. Get out there. Good tackle there from 96. That's Zach Harrison. A touchdown for Miami. Nick Trainer. So that's okay. You know, as I always say when we get to preseason, it's not necessarily about winning these games, it's about seeing what we have game options. I want to put Meatloaf in there as her backup fullback. Should be able to. There he is. 61 overall fullback. He should see the field. Some backups have circulated in, but can't get Meatloaf on the field. Alright, there he is. Meatloaf Marco Harris. Marco Meatloaf Harris. Harris in there at fullback. And it's the law office of Harris and Harris. Look at Meatloaf go. Oh my goodness. He actually might be a monster fullback. He got out there pretty quick. I know we couldn't turn that into a big game. First time we're seeing, you know, something like that. I think he could end up being a pretty good player for us. Try to pass. Got slow release. Jake Meeks does complete the pass to rookie Jaleel Freeman, though. Like that. Getting Meatloaf out on a route here could be insane. We're going to have to throw over the middle. It's Jaleel Freeman. He could be a really good player for us. I know we're playing against backups here, but I'm liking what I'm seeing overall. Meatloaf can lead the way. Six, a six seconds here. We can set up a field goal. Does the job. All right, we'll take the lead going into the locker room. Not too mad about that. Again, it's more about just seeing what we have. And already I'm excited about what I've seen from Meatloaf Marco and from... Jaleel Freeman. Play action. Shot down the field. Meeks for Freeman. Cannot bring it down. But that's why you have Meatloaf Marco on your team. Lead the way on fourth and short. Look at the block. And keep in mind, we're usually going to have B. John Robinson to these spots. He's going to have more burst, more acceleration. He'll be able to go through these holes a lot quicker and better than Damian Harris can. I'm super excited about that potential. That's only going to be maybe a couple times a game, right? No, that's not going to be our offense. It's just having a hybrid offensive tackle tight end fullback in the game. As Jake Meeks finds Trent Leverett for the score. Intercepted by Jason Carrington. That's a takeaway from a young player I like to see. Second year guy, of course, out of Michigan State. Love to see him take a big step this year. Definitely have big expectations. Love to see a big play like that as Neil Madsen still in the game. We don't really have a lot of receiver depth, though. So the sense that he's out there as Gentry gets in the backfield. But it seemed like instantly. Miami going for the onside kick to try and keep this game alive. It's actually going to be recovered. What are you doing? I think that was George Elliott at linebacker. Why did you try and recover it like that? Absolutely insane. Verticals, throw over the middle, nearly intercepted, but dropped by Allen. I don't know how he doesn't catch that. That's going to be picked. Dylan Stanley drops a pick now. The game is all but over, but we, you know, pretend that we're a good football team. And we just came off of a Super Bowl win, but come on. And that's our starting inside linebacker playing in the fourth quarter of a preseason game. We can't catch a pass thrown right to it. Come on. 
And down goes the quarterback. Miles Terry with the pressure, the sack, the force fumble. Now it's second and 24 after the Dolphins recover. Only 16 seconds to go in this. They are in a very tough spot. Check down, not going to be good for much. Third and 16, zero timeouts left. Not really actually letting many adjustments here. Keep a player in a block. They're going to go to the sideline. Make it a more manageable fourth down. Okay, I would have probably taken a shot to the end zone there. Just so you can get two. It's still a low percentage play either way. I prefer two shots instead of just one. This is what they wanted to do. Leave it all down to one play. And here that one play is. It's batted down. Incomplete. Game over. And we're going to be 1-0 and here in the preseason. Next preseason game is against the Bills. And we'll try to go 2-0. Really backed up in our own end zone here. What a place to start. When you have Bijan Robinson, it's not a problem. And there goes Robinson. One man to beat. He jukes past him. Use the speed. Keanu Neal is going to catch him. How is Keanu Neal going to catch him? How do we run out of stamina mid-run like that? Bijan finished the play. It's a massive run. But we didn't end up scoring. Getting tracked down by Keanu Neal because you full stamina. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it what it is. It's embarrassing. Bijan should be embarrassed. I don't want that happening in the regular season. No way, no how. Get it to Madsen. Pass interference, ball at the one. Beat loaf into the game. Big 79, first and goal from the one. Now is the time, and Meatloaf into the end zone. Touchdown. Meatloaf Harris. The Mountain. That's really what his name should be, but Meatloaf is a more fun nickname. But he really is the Mountain. 6'7", 6'8", 380 pounds or something in the neighborhood. Massive human being. And he's going to be a lot of fun to have on our team. Let's give him another fullback dive. Third and three. Do we really trust him as a runner? I'm going to go back to this probably if we don't get it. He's got some burst to him, you know. Okay. Okay, Meatloaf. Last play of the first quarter. Oh, you didn't pick up the blitz. How did that come in unblocked? I thought for sure, and I looked at it. I saw him blitzing. I'm like, this is going to get picked. We held on the play anyway. I would probably decline this, obviously. They do, but... How did that blitz not get picked up? Young Wayku drills from 57, never in doubt with him. We seem to have a monster kicker in every franchise the last couple of years. Wyatt Anthony and Giants franchise, legend. Young Wayku has been lights out. We might have missed one or two field goals the entire series. Third and three. Run to the outside. Wow, they shut that down. 13 rushes for 150 yards in the first half of the preseason game. Love that. Second and seven. I like Jaleel Freeman here. Pretty good route. He's actually wide open diving catch. Touchdown, Jaleel Freeman. Hopefully the first of many in his career. I like how Neil Madsen just going to play every quarter of every game. Great route from Freeman, really. I'd like to get him running after the catch. I mean, 90 plus agility at 6'5", 220 is no joke. Let's we'll see what that looks like. Fourth and inches. Run up the middle, Chanel cannot find the running back. Another fourth down attempt here. Make a play, Pleasant. Make a play. Fourth and one, we got a 22 point lead right now. That is a first down. No way you're gonna try and run for this. A fourth and goal, what is that? Also, did they fix the lighting here at Mercedes-Benz? Or is it just because it's a night game? Because the lighting for once here actually looks good. And it never looks good. Everything's clear, well lit. I don't know. Very interesting. The pitch. I know, Madsen, get the football. Thank you. Running away from the football is certainly a choice. Take an end zone shot here on third and eight. We have time. Launching it deep. Freeman cannot reel it in. Let's try it again. Maybe put some more air underneath it. Uh, they're really all over that. We're going to throw it anyway. Ends up being a laser beam because it feels like almost impossible to throw a touch pass in this game. You got to tap the button for less than a second. Unbelievable. 
that we're going to win 24 nothing, almost in any conceivable way. Uh, I, I can't imagine this being anything but a 24 to nothing final. And that's exactly what this is going to be. 24 zip. 2 0. And we do have a training camp standout here. What's it going to be? Ezekiel Pleasant? No, it's Dion Dobbins. I'm actually very in favor of that. And I think we just take the opportunity. Block shedding's cool, but getting plus three to power and finesse moves is going to be the way to do this. If we want to build a dominant pass rush, investing heavily in our top 10 pick from the year prior is going to be the way to do it. Deion Dobbins from LSU gets plus three to power and finesse moves. He was already good in both areas, right? And if I didn't show it to you, he got, I think it was a plus two boost to an 85 in finesse moves. So now that should be even better. Only star dev, unfortunately. But now 88 finesse moves, 84 power moves. He is looking very good. Block shedding is only a 75. They don't pay you for run stop. Okay? Get after the quarterback. It's something we do not do well. We don't really do that well at all. I need Deion Dobbins to truly emerge as a monster player for us. Eba Katie's got what? 82 finesse moves? It's not good enough. Deion Dobbins, this is truly a chance to break out because with the last two games here, preseason, training camp, all that included, his finesse moves have gone from, I want to say, I, I think it was a plus five overall. I think it was plus two an upgrade and then plus three with that training camp standout so that's a significant boost because 83 is cool and then power moves was 81 that's cool 88 you're starting to talk about a real difference maker and something you can actually get excited about power moves i mean that's that's getting pretty good as well Bijan, can we even upgrade him no we can't we can move him to receiver and upgrade him but uh, not really worth it Khalil Freeman also with an upgrade, and we're about to find out if he has Superstar or Superstar X-Factor, one of the two. We're going to boost him up to a 75 overall. Going to do Deep Threat. If he gets an ability slot, we'll know. Not looking great because it's three things. He's going to have Star Dev. That's expected. That's fine. Obviously, slightly disappointing because you're always rooting for you know, higher than that, but it's fine. It's possible. See what we can do against the Jags here. The run is, I wouldn't say shut down. Fresh limit at five yards. It looked okay. Didn't really look like a, a lot of yards, but you'd love five yards of snap if you get it. So, well, I mean, I guess overall, that's actually not that great. Pretty much means you would have no explosive plays. But if you could actually sign up for five yards of snap, surely take that. Because you would never get off the field. Anyway, third and five. Good way to beat zone coverage. It was not my responsibility. It was not man, linebacker, on running back. It was zone coverage. Corner misplayed that very badly. And for a real game, I might be more upset about it. But it's preseason. He's going to get cut. Was that A.J. Terrell? Don't care. I'll do it anyway. Get outside, we can see. What are you doing, Jesse Bates? The players in this game have absolutely no awareness at all. This is one of the highest rated defensive players in the NFL. Jesse Bates may be the highest rated safety. Look at him here in coverage. The ball's thrown right by him. I don't even think he knows that he's on the field right now. There is no effort to play the football. None. How is that even possible? Okay, 6 nothing. A lot of pair of field goals. Let's get on the board with the touchdown. Take the lead. Oh, that's in wide open. I'd be a fool not to take that. This is ridiculous. It's fake punt, fullback pass, essentially. That's what we're going to opt to do. How does that work? It wasn't a fullback pass. It was a pass to the fullback. Beatloaf, Mountain, Harris, scores again. I, he is huge. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a player look this big in Madden before. 
It's absolutely insanely huge. And he's a touchdown machine. No way, this is a catch. Wow. We had a wide open man on the cross. Or it wasn't even a cross, it was actually big coming across. I'm like, it's preseason. Let's test the arm. The fact that this is almost even completed is actually insane. Drummond just kind of runs by everybody, but Andre Sisko tracks it down. Needed it to be about foot in front, and that's a huge play. We don't get what we want. Get the true quarterback experience here. I don't think I've ever played from that angle. I don't think I ever will again. 25 seconds to go in the first half. That could have been better coverage, truly. Felt like we were trying to take away a couple at the same time, though. Give myself a slight pass. It's actually the last play of the first half, potentially. Throw to the end zone. Just don't get it. That's a touchdown. My, my defenders are yes, it's, it's almost impressive, really. I hate that. Absolutely, positively hate it. Quentin Drummond on a drag, shallow crosser. Why does he stop? There should be no option there. Why would you stop, especially linebacker sitting down waiting for it? Like, oh, linebacker just breaking down? Let's throw Drummond open. Nah, he stops. Oh, uh, it's always something, man. Always something. Just preseason. I'm not going to get worked up about it. More than I already have. But every drag should not be an option run. Run the route! We actually might be looking at our first loss here. Jags up 19-7 right now. We struggle to find the end zone. And when stuff like that can happen, I feel like I'm playing NCAA 14. Oof. I'm not going to get mad, though. It's just it's preseason game three. I'm not mad. That's going to be wide open. Leverett having a nice preseason. Might even make the team. Can I get Freeman out wide here? I could make things kind of interesting. Maybe. Who it does? Yes! No! <laughs> Freeman can't bring in the touchdown. You know, my like idea for him was kind of that he'd be the jump ball guy outside of you know, our tight ends. But he's not really coming down with many of these. And I don't love that. This game, though, it's very difficult to get a jump ball animation. What about with a touch pad? It is good to try things, but... Offensive. So it's, it's good to try things here in preseason because we know what you know could work and what won't work. Frustrating. Not even get a chance. I uh, O line do. Oh, right guard beat instantly. Oh, well, Chris Lindstrom's playing right tackle because of depth. And we drop to two and one here in preseason. I'm not especially mad about that. I think this period was really good to figure out some things. Defensively, I don't think a whole lot's going to change. Pleasant, I do think it's going to rotate in. But I would say that offensively, Freeman can be a weapon. Maybe not as a vertical threat that, or jump ball guy. And then the mountain. Marco Meatloaf Harris. He might just be more than a sub-package fullback. They probably want us to cut him. Yeah, in your dreams. Absolutely no chance. Kelvin Smart can get cut. Don't need Brett Mabin. Josh Lewis. Can't figure out a reason to keep you. We have good depth already at corner. I think running back's totally fine. And receiver is not something we need. 95 speed's good, though. 5'8". But I don't need more receivers. O-line depth is actually okay. Aiden Ellis is here. We need to make two cuts. A quarterback. Tim Wayne. What do you have for it? 87 speed. Was he someone that could actually catch the ball? 6'3", 205. I want to say we looked at him, and he can't. That's my recollection. Not awful, I guess. No, I mean, it is awful. I would never play him ever. 
don't need a receiver anyway. I would say, I know Cade Nellis is a fan favorite. I definitely don't need, I don't need four running backs. In real life, yeah, not, not here. Fullback, we have our fullback, but four or five. I liked what I saw from Leverett. I don't think we need six receivers. I'll move Stout to the practice squad. That makes up our roster. I really like the potential of the mountain. That is Meatloaf Harris. Certainly not moving Clark Phillip, but ready to try to run it back. Win a Super Bowl here in year four. I'm super excited about that possibility. Thank you so much for watching. And Deion Dobbins, hope he can blossom into a star. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.